I might write ready. Yo, TJ, wow. thanks for having me onto your channel, bro. Um, been looking forward to doing this for a little while, man. I've been watching your content from afar, appreciating what you do. You're obviously a true martial artist, and I thought it's time for a little battle of wits and see which one of us can come out on top, bro. Thanks for having me here. I'm down. I'm down. Let's do it. Yeah, so um, just so for everyone that's watching, so I can make this nice and clear, me and TJ disagree on who's going to win between George Masvidal and Ben Askren. So we thought the best way to hash this out is to get all of you guys involved as well. And you guys can comment below and let us know who you think is going to win. But we're going to drop some facts and see how you guys take it. How's that sound, TJ? Man, I am ready. You're, you know, your channel has the perfect name, Mind for Combat, because you have a real eye for this stuff. So I'm ready to uh, get into a nice debate with you here. Thank you, bro. Thanks for the kind words, man. Um, so let's get going. So firstly, with Ben Askren and George Masvidal, I think we can both agree that this is a real important fight in the worldweight division. Um, George Masvidal has gained a lot of traction off his win over Darren Till and, and lighting up Leon Edwards as well. That, that definitely had to help him. And um, George Masvidal is a guy who's been around for a long time. I've been a fan of him for a long time, going back to when he finished Donald Cerrone. But even further than that, when he was fighting on Strike Force and when he fought um, Paul, Paul Semtex Daly back in the days in the fight that I felt like he won. And this was when Paul Daly was on top of the world and no one knew about George Masvidal. Ben Askren... It's very, it's very good that he is getting some recognition now because I felt for a long time I was scared that Ben Askren is going to be one of those guys that slides into obscurity and no one's ever going to remember him for how good he was, kind of like Cole Conrad. Ben Askren, for, um, just so that we can kind of highlight some of his credentials, he's won the, he, won Bellator, uh, he won Bellator tournaments, won Bellator world titles, won one championship world titles. So this is a guy who's won world titles, succeeded at the highest level of wrestling as well and has made his transition and he's coming back to MMA. And no matter what you guys want to think or say about it, he's done real well against Robbie Lawler. Now, he got lit up in the beginning of that fight. But I think it's important to note that he was able to weather that storm. And the fact that he was able to weather that storm from Robbie Lawler when he was rusty is key coming into this fight because George Masvidal is going to want to strike with Ben Askren. Ben Askren is going to want to grapple with George Masvidal. Does Ben Askren, um, does George Masvidal hit as hard as Robbie Lawler? No. Is he a more refined striker? Now, that's debatable, but does he hit harder than Robbie Lawler? I would say absolutely not. He does not hit hard, harder than Robbie Lawler. When he's fighting Ben Askren, a guy who, if you look at one of um, George Masvidal's recent losses in Damian Meyer, is Ben Askren a bigger, stronger wrestler than Damian Meyer? There's no question. Yes, he is. And I think therein lies the blueprint for how this fight is going to play out. And um, that's why I'm giving a huge edge to Ben Askren. A, size, and B, in wrestling. And then when you look at the Damian Meyer fight, I feel like this is going to be an impactful um, advantage that he's going to have over him. Your thoughts? Uh, you know, those are a lot of good points. But whenever I look at, <clears throat> whenever I look at how a fight is going to take place, no matter if it's Jorge Masvidal, Ben Askren, whoever it is, I always look at who has the most tools, who has the most weapons in a fight. Now, absolutely, Ben Askren is definitely the strongest wrestler out of the pair of these guys and you could make the argument that wrestling is the most important background to have in mma but when you look at who has the highest potential to finish this fight i would have to say unquestionably it is jorge masvidal he does have one punch knockout power like we saw against darren till no he doesn't have quite as much power as robbie lawler but you don't need uh, one punch knockout power to finish a fight. You know, you could get a TKO. You know, as long as he can knock Ben, es ben Askren down with a punch, he could finish that fight via TKO. Who knows? Jorge Masvidal is an extremely underrated grappler. Not just, you know, takedown defense wise or clinch wise or even wrestling wise, but his jujitsu is phenomenal. Okay. He could certainly submit some of the best guys in that division. And I, I believe he could. Uh, potentially submit Ben Askren if Ben Askren is not careful. I mean, Ben Askren's strong suit is definitely his grappling in general. But I've I've watched Ben Askren grapple with just grapplers in grappling tournaments. Okay, and he's you know he's beatable there. You know he's it's definitely his strongest area, but he is beatable there. So when you look at all of Jorge's tools, you know he has more tools than Ben Askren. Now, um. If you were to say to me, oh, well, Ben Askren is definitely going to win this fight, but he's definitely going to win by decision. You know, that's a hard point to argue because um, if you can control the fight, like we know that Ben can uh, with his wrestling, then uh, that's a fair point. He can he can um, get the decision win. But 
that's that's not what I look at when I look at a fight. I always look at who has the highest potential to finish it. So what would you say uh, uh, to my uh, rebuttal in terms of who can finish uh, this fight more more than likely? Yeah, see, I don't disagree with you in that George Masvidal has much more opportunities to finish the fight. On the on the feet, it's always going to be George Masvidal who can finish the fight, never Ben Aspen. I don't, in, going throughout his career, he's never been able to finish someone on the feet. So it's not going to happen now. And when we're talking about grappling, I don't disagree that George Masvidal does have incredibly underrated grappling. Even when you're looking at some of his submissions, like he got um, uh, Michael Chiesa with a dash choke. That was, that was pretty damn impressive. And, and he's just generally demonstrated an all-round game. He obviously trains with good grapplers. Colby Colmerton being one of his good friends, he trains with a good wrestler as well. The issue I have here is, although he has more tools to finish the fight, and he has been able to finish um, fighters, fights by uh, his ground game previously, I don't feel like that necessarily demonstrates to me that he's got the skills to finish um, Ben Askren on the ground. Now, a fight that I'm going to link this to, and well, there's a couple of fights that I think play out and, and make a difference when you're looking into this fight and want to make a prediction on the winner. Firstly is George Masvidal's fight with Damian Meyer. Now, I kind of alluded that to, uh, to that in my previous point. I would like to know your thoughts on that when I pass it back to you. But Damian Meyer was able to hold on to um, George Masvidal. He was able to hold him, and now he's not as big or strong or the decorated wrestler that Ben Askren is. And he was able to hold on to George Masvidal, and George Masvidal done very well in that fight in the sense that he didn't get finished. He also had some moments in that where he was able to defend the takedowns, get standing and land some shots off. But the fact remains that he was able to hold him into position. Now, ben, um, sorry, Damian Meyer has gone on since that fight to catch three losses. Those losses were to the likes of Tyron Woodley, um, Colby Covington and Kamar Usman. Now, in those fights, Damian Meyer showed us that his wrestling isn't there with the world-class wrestlers. He cannot wrestle with Tyron Woodley. He cannot wrestle with Kamar Usman. He cannot wrestle with Colby Covington. But he out-wrestled George Masvidal. Does, could Ben Askren out-wrestle those guys? I, I would argue that, yes, Ben Askren could out-wrestle Colby Covington. He could out-wrestle Kamar Usman, who out-wrestled Damian Meyer, does that impact the fight? In my opinion, it does. Now, another fight that is key when we're looking in this fight is Ben Askren's fight in Bellator with Douglas Lima. Now, Douglas Lima, for those of you guys who don't know, um, Ben Askren is, um, sorry, uh, Douglas Lima is a very decorated, powerful striker. He's a two-time Bellator world champion. He's about to fight Rory McDonald again in the finals of their World Weight World Grand Prix. Now, he's a very, very dangerous guy. He's been a very, very dangerous guy for a long time. When he fought Ben Askren, he was on a 10-fight win streak, a former MSV champion, moving over to, um, moving over to, um, to Bellator. And so that's something to consider. We're talking about Douglas Lima, a prolific finisher on the feet who's bigger and stronger than George Masvidal and has a better grappling game, I would say, than George Masvidal as well. Now, I'm not saying he would beat George Masvidal with their four. I feel like George Masvidal enjoys, enjoys advantages over Douglas Lima as well. The point being that Douglas Lima was dangerous on the feet, he was dangerous on the ground, and Ben Askren was still able to dominate him. So to that, I will ask you now, and I want your thoughts on this. Do you think that Damian Meyer is stronger or a better grappler than Ben Askren? And do you think that um, George Masvidal is able to hit harder or is uh, more dynamic in his game than Douglas Lima? You know, it's, it's funny that you bring up Damian Maia because you're absolutely right. That is a key fight when we're talking about uh, Ben Askren versus Masvidal. Now, to answer your question, do I think that Damian Maya is a stronger grappler than Ben Askren? Correct? That was your question? Yeah. It, it depends, okay? Because if we're talking in terms of control, absolutely, Ben Askren is the stronger grappler, okay? But grappling isn't just about control. Grappling is about the ability to finish, as I've already mentioned. Damian Maya, in my opinion, has the stronger submission game. So, uh, it... and. Damian Maia was on Masvidal's back for almost a full round and, and at a couple other points during that fight. So to kind of go off of that, like you said, Masvidal did not get finished at all. Um, and he did get controlled by Maya, yes. And as, we, as you mentioned, Ben Askren is the stronger wrestler and has better control. So if I, I understand your thinking, if Masvidal was able to be controlled by Damian Maia, then he should certainly be able to be controlled by Ben Askren. That's fair. That is a fair assumption. Now, what I will say to that is 
Masvidal has been his own worst enemy in every fight that he has lost. And let me elaborate on that. Masvidal has the ability to beat anybody in that division, I believe. Anybody. Where his problem lies is his game planning. Masvidal's kryptonite, oftentimes, is that he fights to his opponent's strengths. Even the fights that he wins. For example, Darren Till. I think if Masvidal took Darren Till to the ground, he could have submitted him easily. Easily. But he chose not to. He chose to strike with Darren Till, which is where Darren Till is strongest. He ended up beating Darren Till. Great for him. But that's the thing about Masvidal. If Masvidal can be smart about this fight and avoid the takedown of Ben Askren altogether, which I believe he has the ability to do, um, if not get back to his feet quickly if he is taken down. If he's able to do that, he can win this fight hands down uh, in the striking department. Um, it, it really all depends on what Jorge Masvidal uh, decides to do. And... And that's the thing, because, you know, I, I don't blame you for picking Ben Askren, because as we discussed, he has the highest chance of winning this by decision because he has that amazing control. But as I keep saying, he has more to, uh, excuse me, he has more tools, uh, George does. So when, when you look at all that, and if you go in there with the mindset that, okay, maybe Jorge will actually be smart this time and actually play against his opponent's strengths, it's, it's really hard to bet against him. It really is. Um, against anybody in the division, you know, Kamar Luzman, Colby Covington, if Jorge decides to uh, play against their strengths, he could win against anybody, against the top five, against the champion. Now, the last thing I kind of want to touch on with Jorge is the amount of momentum he has behind him. That Darren Till win was huge. You know, that was a horrific knockout against Darren <laughs> Till. He knocked him into space, dude. Yeah. It was crazy. So I think that Jorge has a fair amount of momentum behind him. I think he's riding it well. And I think that it can carry him uh, to a title shot, potentially. Now, Ben Askren, yes, he's coming off a win. But look at how it ended. You know, it ended very controversially. And there's a lot of people calling for a rematch with him and Robbie Lawler. He was in trouble in that fight. He almost lost. Now, I give him all the credit in the world because he was very tough, stuck through that uh, difficult knockdown and everything. But you can make the argument that Ben Askren did not win that fight. So in terms of momentum, Jorge has more. And I think that can be a big factor in this fight. What do you say to that? So <clears throat> I definitely don't disagree that Jorge has more momentum coming into this fight. He's, like you said, that big win over Darren Till that he got, especially coming off. The issue I have coming into this fight that, yes, momentum matters, and it does have an impact, and there's no question that Ben Askren's last fight was controversial when it's finished. When, you're, when we're talking about tools, and I think you touched on it best yourself, George Masvidal is his own worst enemy. He will engage in the incorrect terms. Now, if you look at a couple of fights in Jorge Masvidal's careers, it kind of demonstrates that. So his fight with Stephen Thompson where he, for some reason, kept on getting kept on the outside and kept getting outboxed, and he just, just wasn't using a more well-rounded striking game, and he was engaging Stephen Thompson on terms that, um, that favoured Stephen Thompson, and because of that, he obviously lost the decision. If you go further back in his career, his fight with um, Gilbert Melendez and strike force, and I felt like there was times where he showed to me he could have won that, but he kept on engaging on the wrong terms. I feel like George Masvidal has made those bad decisions. Now, coming into this fight, I would touch... On another issue is going to be psychological, and when I say psychological, is that I feel like Ben Askren is a little bit under uh, under George Masvidal's skin. When he was talking to Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan Experience, he goes, "This is the first time in my career I've fought someone that I genuinely want to hurt." What does that tell you about a guy who's had maybe 50 professional fights already, and he's in this position now? For me, those are troubling signals. Ultimately, when it comes down to this fight, yes, I agree with you that George Masvidal has more tools, but in mixed martial arts, the guys with the most tools don't always necessarily win. And I look no further than Cain Velasquez versus Francis Ngannou, who had more tools then, but what happened? It's just who's able to, A, employ the correct game plan, and B, who's able to demonstrate the correct, um, the, the correct presence of mind in the fight to be able to do the right thing. So now, 
when we're talking about Ben Askren and his um, biggest tool is going to be his wrestling, it will always be his wrestling. His biggest tool won't be BJJ, it won't be boxing, it won't be nothing else, it will be his wrestling. Do I feel like that one particular tool is sharp enough to grab George Masvidal, clinch him against the cage or drag him down and make it a real tough fight for George Masvidal to be able to shine and show his, um, show his skill set? I feel like it will, and that's why I have to lean on Ben Askren to get the win over George Masvidal. So I suppose to summarise, I'm going to say this. I don't disagree with much of what you said here, bro. I think mo- much of what you said is spot on, and I, I I can't argue with that because what you've said is fact. The issue is that I feel like you're not you're underestimating the ability of Ben Askren to be able to grab a hold of George Masvidal and keep a hold of him, even if you don't go for submissions, even if it's a lay and pray win, a fight that maybe would be considered boring. I'm not saying that it's going to be the most exciting win for Ben Askren. I'm not saying that he's going to walk away with fans clamoring for a title shot because maybe they'll be a little bit annoyed. We both know MMA fans can be fickle. But the truth is, and as far as I see it, Ben Askren should be able to grab a hold of George Masvidal based on evidence from what I've seen from both of these guys' previous fights. And he should be able to hold him for long enough to be able to ride out a decision. I don't feel like George Masvidal is going to want to kick because that's going to set up takedowns. I feel like if they're on the floor grappling... Despite how good George Masvidal's uh, BJJ game is, I feel like Ben Askren's safe. And if they're on the feet, uh, George Masvidal ain't going to have enough power to get a one-shot KO. And I feel like Ben Askren's going to make him so uncomfortable on the ground and with the constant pressure for the takedowns that he ain't even going to be settling into his um, striking rhythm. I'm going with Ben Askren for the unanimous decision. That's fair, man. All fair points, and I cannot um, disagree with you on on a lot of them. But I will have to disagree with you on one thing, ultimately, who the winner will be. I will say that Jorge Masvidal gets it done. He rides his own hype train into victory, and he gets the TKO victory. Let's say for fun, uh, the second round, okay? Okay, okay. Well, you know what, bro? I I really enjoyed this. So how about we have a post-fight discussion after the fight specifically on this one? Absolutely, man. So we're going to break that down after that fight goes down because it's not just an interesting fight in terms of skill wise, but it's interesting in terms of hype and build up, uh, as you mentioned before. So uh, even though it's not the main event, it's it's a main event to us. So yeah, exactly. yeah I will gladly break that down with you, my friend. Yeah, sounds great, man. Thank you for having me on, brother. All right, guys, uh, make sure you check out Mind for Combat. Excellent, excellent channel. OK. All about MMA. Got a lot of boxing stuff up there, too. Real eye for the sport of MMA and boxing. Check it out. Thank you, brother. All right, guys. uh, This has been the Fight Dialogue. Breaking it down. My name is Tim. I'm joined by Rowan. Take care.